This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm joined by my good friend, Mr. Shane Watson. A lot's gone on since I last seen you. Obviously, I'm now with the old Boxing Social and you're just crushing life at s Jam, aren't you? Yeah, well, I mean, you've been everywhere these days, Charlie, innit? Like, you got a full-time missus now. I don't really hear much from you anymore. Do you know what I mean? We've lost him. And uh, if you're not on Eddie Earn's Instagram, you're, you're with her. So, uh, I don't really know where you are these days. So, but... Good to see you back. Good to see you back, mate. And you, brother. Always a pleasure. Let's jump into it. Obviously, this week you've got a lot going on. Obviously, I know Adam's out in Rome for Guido Vanilla, who fights Jay McFarlane. We've got John Hedges to my left, and on the, obviously Johnny Fisher on the card. Um, really exciting times for the team at S Jam this week. Yeah, yeah, really busy. You've got um, John Hedges fighting an uh, undefeated uh, prospect. He's 3 0. So that'd be a good little test for him. We've got Johnny Fisher fighting a tough guy in Dominic Musil, you know. Records are deceiving sometimes. He gave David Adelaide a really good fight for four rounds. He, he won the first, the second was really close. Then David Adelaide landed a big shot in the fourth and got it um, got it finished and, and over with. So it's a tough fight for Johnny on uh, Saturday night. Good little step up for him. But yeah, I'm really excited. We've got a lot of uh, fight dates. We've got Tommy Fletcher out November 26th. We've got John Hedges potentially out on the same day, all being well this fight night. And we've got Lerone on the 27th against Zach Trelli. So yeah, we've got, we're active, we've got a lot of fights and we're going to have fight news on Joe Joyce soon as well. So it's all really good. Obviously really nice to see Lerone back out. We know that it's been a bit of a difficult period for him with uh, sort of inactivity that I suppose he just didn't want at all. But, you know, gets out in a, in a fight with Zach Trelli, which is actually a really, really good fight. Yeah, I mean, listen, I know it's, it's a bit of like... I can see why fans are a bit frustrated. When you go and beat Carlos Gongora, who's arguably in the best super middleweight in division, or up there anyway, especially in the fashion that you beat him, people are going to expect you then to go and fight another world name. But he's been inactive. I don't want to pick him with a world name with a, with a lot of inactivity. So Zach Charlie's a solid opponent, tough. His game, he's going to come and give it a good go. Then we beat Zach Charlie, and then we can look at like a world title opportunity in like February, March. That's really the, the aim, really. So it's a good takeover fight for him without being disrespectful to Zach Charlie, but that's what it is. And then uh, we'll look for bigger things next year. I haven't managed to speak up, speak to you since Joe Joyce's just impressive, impressive win over Joseph Parker. No one has done that to Joseph Parker. Relentless juggernautness, as he says, and that's what it is. Um, you know, just your reflection on that. And now for Joyce, obviously, we see Frank Warren talking, your team talking. You just want the biggest fights now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, obviously, great performance um, to stop Parker and not just that to beat him the way that he did. Yeah, we're looking at some names to him. If we're being completely honest, there isn't a lot of options to go into February next year because... Every decent fighter has basically got a fight day, but you've still got the likes of Luis Ortiz that's around, Kubrat Pulev. I, I know that fans are not going to be over the moon one because they're not Joseph Parker and they're not some of the other big names that he's been linked with. But listen, ultimately, we never got offered the Fury fight uh, in December as much as people said he weren't ready, but there, there are two fighters that we would have put him back in the camp for early, and that would have been Joshua if he was on December 17th still, which he's not, and the other one would have been Fury if he was on December 3rd, but we never got the opportunity, but that's fine. I can imagine if you're going to fight Usyk in March, which he is, you're not going to want to fight Joe Joyce in December because that's going to be a hard fight and a hard camp. So you want a, a bit of an easier touch, which is fine. But um, speaking to Fang, it looks like we could get the winner of Fury Usyk in uh, the summer. So, well, they have to or give up the belt anyway. Well, let's talk a little bit about this whole Joe Joyce, Fury, Chisora, Usyk saga. Um, obviously, Frank was doing interviews last week and he sort of went through the list and said that Joe Joyce wouldn't be available. It would have been a quick turnaround, but obviously you've done that interview post-fight after uh, Joyce's brilliant knockout win. And you said that he would have been available. Were you a little bit disappointed that you weren't offered that fight? Yeah. Well, listen, it's not... I, I, as I said before, it's not ideal. I'd obviously, he's had two back-to-back -back camps of Hammer and... Um, Parker, it would have been nice for him to have a couple of more weeks off and like go and live his life a little bit. But when a, a fight like Fury and AJ comes around, especially the form Joe's in at the minute and the shape he was in, it's not something we would have turned down. Like you have to make exceptions and jump into fights like that. So they were the two we would have made an exception for. But it never happened. We never it never got spoken about. But that's fine. But um, like I said, you ain't gonna want to fight Joe Joyce just before fighting Usyk in March. Number one. That's going to be a very, very tough fight at the very least, and I believe Joe beats him. And also, you're not going to be able to jump from a fight like that into March in another tough 12-rounder. So I understand it. But there were never discussions for him to fight Joyce at all. Well, let me ask you your thoughts on Fury Chisora. Uh, it's a top 10 ranked opponent. Derek Chisora's in good form. I don't hate the fight as much as the British public do. I think it will probably be fairly straightforward for Tyson, but 
I think a lot of the fights in the heavyweight division will be fairly straightforward for him. Um, look, Derek Chisora comes off a narrow split decision win against uh, Kubrat Pulev, obviously close-ish fight with Usyk, and then them two fights with Joseph Parker. Your thoughts on that Fury Chisora fight itself? Yeah, it's just like it is what it is. If you if you're gonna go into a fight with Usyk, I can see why he's taken a much lesser opponent this time. He just needs a bit of activity. He wants some rounds on the, in the tank, and. Chisora will probably give him some rounds because he's tough in his game and he ain't going to cause him any trouble and he ain't going to get hurt in there. So it makes sense, I guess, from Fury's side, but for the fans, obviously, it's quite a poor matchup because it's a guy that has lost a lot of times and barely beat Pulev in his last fight, who's also probably a little bit over the hill now. And it's just not, not really, if you're defending your WBC title against him, saying you want to fight anyone, and, and people are going to be disappointed because you were meant to fight AJ and you've gone down to Chisora. Like, why are you going to cut deadlines for. Um, AJ but then negotiate with Chisora for weeks on end afterwards it doesn't make any sense does it but it is what it is man it's still it's still going to sell well it's still do alright on pay-per-view and it's all real leading up to um, Usyk Fury that's what everyone really cares about let's be honest so it's all I really care about as well so um, so yeah I think that's it obviously it's a sticker one for the fans because they wanted a big one and they haven't got it so well Shane top man as always an absolute pleasure look forward to rubbing shoulders throughout the week it's been a while just a final message obviously S Jam really flying at the minute yeah so we've got uh, some big news coming on Joe Joyce's next fight uh, that'll, be, that'll be out within the next couple of weeks I'd imagine um, obviously got these two out this weekend Guido out on uh, Friday live on ESPN I think in the UK it'll be on Fight TV um, what else have we got Soul Dakers will be in a title fight that'll be announced soon uh, Lisa Whiteside is fighting in a title fight actually on November 11th. Lerone against Zach Kelly. Um, I can't think what else we've got. Uh, I think that's it for now. Busy schedule. Oh yeah, Janaid. Janaid's got he's got an announcement and he'll be fighting for a title sooner than you expect, early next year. But he'll be out in December, December 10th on the Leeds bill. Um, and he's in another good step up as well. He, just, he wants to fight, basically fight for world titles already. He's getting a bit ahead of himself, but he's, he's in a good place. He's sparring really well. He's sparring David Avenista next week, actually. So that be been on Florian? Yeah, Florian Marco is actually having hand surgery this week. So he'll be out for a while, but he'll be back out in March. I'm hoping if all the surgery goes well, in a good competitive fight. I like the Tyrone McKenna fight for Florian Marco. It'll be a good fight. Good, really good fight. Good build up. One he can defend his WBC silver title for and uh, move him up the rankings. And it's just like, Florian just needs to be in good fights, good style fights. He does, if he doesn't respect his opponent, his performance comes down. Like when he respected Chris Jenkins, that's why he put in a really good performance. So I need good style opponents for Florian. Um, and Tyron McKenna's one I like, but yeah, so we'll see. Shane Topman, thank you for speaking to me at Boxing